In this video we're going to discuss uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus, also abbreviated NPH. And uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus essentially is a condition in which there is a defect in the CSF uh, resorption. Uh, the cerebrospinal fluid is not being resorbed like it should and as a result it builds up in the ventricles. So. So you get increased CSF in ventricles of the brain. And that uh, can lead to the symptomatology. And um, there's three classic uh, things. It's called a you know, NPH triad. And those three classic things, very important to remember. And the first one is a gait disturbance. Uh, these patients can have a uh, classic gait disturbance that uh, almost uh, s seems like their feet are sticking to the floor, uh, almost known as a magnetic magnetic gait. So that's the first part of this symptomatology. The second one is a urinary incontinence. And the third one is uh, oftentimes it doesn't occur late until late in the disorder and that's dementia, uh, progressive uh, dementia, memory loss. So remember that uh, NPH triad. So then if a patient does indeed come uh, to you with these uh, three things or even two of the three things uh, uh, because dementia is late, uh, often late finding, how do you proceed? Well obviously you know you do a clinical exam and um, assess their gait and you know assess their memory and uh, talk to them about their urinary incontinence but the the key test of course is the neuroimaging either a CT or an MRI and then one another thing that's done that's actually very important um, is you if you are pretty convinced after you do the CT and MRI that this in, is indeed NPH normal pressure hydrocephalus you do something called a th diagnostic uh, lumbar puncture diagnostic lumbar puncture and this lumbar puncture um, can also be therapeutic in the sense that what you do is you remove some CSF maybe 30 to 50 mLs of CSF and over the course of the uh, following few hours the patient's symptomatology can improve and if that indeed does happen, then you've confirmed the diagnosis of NPH. All right, so then uh, how do you treat this? Well, the lumbar puncture uh, test probably made you kind of think uh, in terms of how this may be treated. And really what you have to do is you have to remove the CSF. And um, the lumbar puncture can, of course, remove the CSF. Um, but unfortunately... Uh, because this is an ongoing uh, problem, uh, this is a problem of CSF resorption, this uh, really is treated with uh, something called a VP shunt. And VP stands for ventriculoperitoneal. And I'll explain uh, what that means with the diagram. So here's a VP shunt um, right here and up here are the ventricles that are enlarged because of the accumulation of the CSF and the shunt starts right up there and it drains the CSF into the peritoneal cavity that's why it's called a ventriculoperitoneal shunt and the excess fluid is actually drained into the abdomen and this uh, shunt uh, helps remove the CSF and can uh, result in a gra gradual and um, steady improvement in the symptomatology that NPH patients have. I wanted to close off with some vignettes and um, here we go. Alright, first one. 70 year old man is admitted to the hospital for delirium associated with urinary tract infection. Upon adequate treatment of the infection, patient's mental status improves significantly though he is noted to remain partially disoriented. He also has impairment in short-term memory difficulties in naming simple objects and impaired concentration. His family members confirm an eight-month history of gradual progressive decline in cognitive abilities which they attribute to old age. However, the man is no longer able to finance, 
manage his finances and gotten lost while driving to the grocery store on two occasions. Prior to discharge from hospital, the nursing staff reports that the patient continues to have urinary incontinence, though his infection has resolved. He is also noted to have very unsteady gait, requiring assistance when walking, and other ob no other obvious signs or symptoms, which disorder is most likely accounts for these for this patient's dementia. Well, it always helps to have talked a little bit about the uh, uh, condition right before the vignette you know, because it makes uh, it very easy. But this is the type of vignette that you want to be uh, comfortable uh, with um, on an exam where even though it's long, if you can kind of um, notice the, the triad, um, that NPH triad in their description of the patient, it can lead very quickly to the right answer. And finally, one last one. A 72-year-old man comes to clinical attention with progressive memory loss, urinary incontinence, and gait instability. MRI of the brain shows dilation of the ventricular cavities while the cerebral cortex appears normal. No infarcts are seen. Repeated lumbar puncture reveal occasional increases in CSF pressure. The biopsy of the frontal cortex demonstrates the absence of neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques. Which of the following is most appropriate in treatment? Uh, I wasn't able to fit in the answer choices, but um, I can always write in the answer choices real quick. Uh, the answer choices were uh, A, uh, acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, B, aspirin, C, uh, levodopa, uh, D, uh, ventricular shunt, ventricular shunt, and E, uh, vitamin B1, also known as thymine. Well, most of these are um, used to treat some neurologic disorder. Um, as you know, this is uh, Wernicke's, uh, uh, this is uh, Parkinson, this is used to decrease uh, stroke risk, and this is used to um, treat. Um, uh, Alzheimer's but uh, we all know that this uh, vignette is describing NPH and the treatment of NPH is ventriculoperitoneal shunting also known as VP shunting so the answer is D VP shunting you place a shunt that looks just like this right here